So, we're gonna start. So currently, the refugium has, wow, that shadow is much bigger. Um, if you remember from previous videos, the shadow is much smaller. Uh, it currently has um, the shadow, some uh, bio, like rock things that um, have a place for the bacteria to settle in. And it has, um, what else does it have? Kopi pods we put in. And it oh, also has Kopi pods inside. Stations. Yeah. That's the new stuff. So we're going to be adding some micro factor. Yeah, so this is uh, full of bacteria. Good and bacteria. it's going to help, yeah, uh, the fusion process. We also have this miracle filter substrate, which is like mud, and it's supposed to help the refugium uh, perform better. So this is what the uh, phosphate levels have looked um, throughout the first implementation over here to current. Uh, you can see this is around where we implemented it and it's currently at 0 0.08. So uh, hopefully it'll keep getting like maintain this level of phosphates and that would be really good okay so we're going to take some water outside of the refugium just like that um, why are we doing this again we have to basically remove the chato and the bio pellets so that we can put the, it's going to be three layers now. Mud on the bottom, then the bio pellets. So we're going to be putting, oh, look how big that is. So lush and huge, nice. It's big definitely bone. grown yeah. since we bought it, right? Yeah. Much yeah. bigger. So we're going to take all of the rocks and and the uh, Kobe pods and Chato out. So we put the, so we can put the mud at the bottom of it. Wait, why wouldn't we just put the mud on top of the rocks? Because wouldn't it sink fly there? around. Uh, That's actually a big criticism of this miracle mud. It creates like a chocolate milk <laughs> dust cloud, so it's yeah. kind of risky. Yeah, we don't want chocolate milk dust, dust cloud. clouds. That's why we're putting it at the bottom. Now what I could do is actually why don't I put the mud there and then I'll put everything on top? Yeah, well, that's what we'll do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could have done that too. But it has all the attachments ready. Yeah, well, we'll put those attachments back on. Okay, yeah. So instead, we're going to put the mud in this orange bucket and then everything else on top. So, like a. So the orange, orange is going to be the new refugium. Yeah. And I poured it out because there were little pieces yeah. of chato at the bottom. If I buried it in the mud, it'll decompose. Yeah. So now is the famous miracle mud. Ten years ago, this was all the rage. It's like an old school reefer thing. Mm -hmm. People, most people don't do it anymore. But I figured, hey, if I'm gonna kind of make this refugium as great as it can be, I mean, some sand on the bottom can't hurt. And if the Miracle Mud is better than just sand, then that's a bonus. So if you can see here, what they claim is it reduces nitrates, supports fish and coral, maintains color. Yeah, all that stuff. Uh, so we're gonna remove it, cut open the bag, put it in the tray, pour water, Lower into. All right. So let's do that. Some miracle mud from Ecosystem Aquarium. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get to cut a hole in the back first, right? Yep. Get my knife. The unboxing of the miracle mud.
Why would we pour it directly in there? Because I have to saturate it with water. Oh. Apparently it's very fine. And it's not like gravel you put in the bottom of the aquarium where it's like thicker. It like looks dusty, pretty chunky almost. to me. Yeah, well, part, some are chunky. Some are not. All right. Then, we're going to slowly saturate this. Mm-hmm. With the water, water and the Kobe the pods are not going to be happy. Well, but they say the Kobe pods love to live in the Miracle Mud. Supposedly. I don't know, man. It's, it's a little bit of, like, snake oil. Like, nobody really knows. Like, is it just dirt? But some people swear by it, and they're like, oh... What does it have in it? Do you know? Like they say mineral, like they say it's basically mud from deep in the sea that they dig up. And then they add some trace elements. Mm. So it's supposed to put like a lot of natural stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, this is a pretty sterile tank. Like it just sterile, has yeah. everything super clean and we need more natural. So you need some dirt and Whatever, miracle. They say there's like bacteria in here already, but then when we think about that plus the microbacter, we're gonna add the microbacter. Complete micro bioculture. Mm hmm. I think you need to let it settle and completely. I think it looks saturated to me. Pour water and let miracle mud settle to the bottom. Pour water into filter, okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it in. Now the question is, do I keep it in the tray or do I just spread it across the bottom? I think you should spread it. You think so? Yeah, like distribute the Miracle Mud around the whole thing. I think they give it to you in a tray because maybe if because you wanna swap it out every year. Yeah. Bottom. We're gonna, okay, yeah. fine. We're gonna... Oh, let that new nutrients seep into the bucket. Mm. Oh, that is dark. Yes, straight from the seabed. Let's go. Okay, so now we've got to slowly fill this up and then let it settle. I never seen that strap. To like spread out the water. Yeah. Like that. that is some dark chocolate milk, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like most people are like super, super gentle. We're kind of being impatient, which is very dangerous in this profession. All right, you can come back in an hour. Yeah, we'll come back in an hour and put the rocks and the chato back in. Mm -hmm. And we'll also be adding this macro bacteria. So we're filling up the, the bag with the bio pellets. Um, because six yeah. months from now when I need to, if I choose to, uh, replace mm -hmm. the miracle mud, I don't want to have it all stuck with my bio pellets. So I have yeah. it in this little sack and I can also, if I had to clean the bio pellets without having to dig up the whole damn refuge. Yeah. Because right now, this is no fun what I'm doing. Okay, so we just put the rocks back in. So as you can see, the rocks are in this mesh bag. Mm -hmm. And that will allow me to 
take them out, put them in, and then when I have to replace the uh, Miracle Mud, I don't have to worry about the rocks getting all caught up in there. Yep. Um, I also put back the wa water level sensor, the display tank mm -hmm. exhaust, and then the display tank intake from here. Thermometer, the Tunge Fuge Light, mm -hmm. and I have our beautiful Chato in here. Look how big it is compared to last time. Yeah, let's like, see if we can find any copepods pods in there. Hold on. It's like taking up the whole thing. Like last time, it was tiny. They say sometimes you Look can see them. Is. Do you see any little boys flying around there? All right, so now oops, we're gonna put the chato back in. The other thing is there were a lot of little strands of chato. Um, I would prefer to be like in a nice ball. You see these like loose strands? I don't know what to do with my right, but we'll Straight in. Pour them in there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. In case there's any pods in there. What are those little bad boys? Mm. What the hell is that? Oh, I think that's duckweed from the freshwater tank. Whatever. Okay, now we have the Fuge and we're going to get the Microbacter 7. Oh, where's the Microbacter 7? Okay, I'm going to shake this up. Daisy, move! Get out! Out, out, out. Complete bile culture. Uh -huh. Supposed to have all kinds of good bacteria. And it says shake well, one capful per 25 gallons. And I don't think you can overdose this, so. We're gonna put one capful in here and I'm gonna Per how many gallons? Per 25, but it's it's healthy bacteria, so I don't think you can. Just gonna like No, we'll do one in here and one in the display. Okay, like go live bacteria, and then we're gonna put some in here yeah. as well. Can it survive in salt water? Yeah, it's salt and water bacteria. Oh. Okay, and then we'll have some more for the future if I ever do need to do maintenance or increase our file load. Yep. So we have uh, reset up the refugium now, and it's been settling, so it's still a little cloudy, but you can kind of see it. One thing I will notice is that the Miracle Mud plus the water does smell like the beach. Yeah. So it definitely, uh, I don't know if they just grabbed this stuff from a beach, probably. Jesus Christ, Daisy. Come on. Man, seriously? Not at a lot. Anyway. So it has a definitely a seafood. Daisy! Has like a seafood, like a ocean smell to it. I guess that's normal. So now what we're gonna do? There's a couple things that I should call out. There are risks with what we're doing here. The first risk is we put a bunch of this Miracle Mud in the bottom, and we're gonna reactivate the refugium, which means every night we're gonna pull water from the display tank, put it into here through this tube, circulate it around, and pull it out through this tube, there could be a high concentration of minerals and stuff. Yeah. And the number one rule of reef keeping is you never do anything suddenly. So yeah. what I have done is I did reduce the quantity of uh, the pump, the dose pump, to exchange the water by half. So tonight, as you can see here, it usually does a 16,000 milliliters a night of exchange, mm -hmm. but we're just going to do 8,000 milliliters, which is, hey Google, how many gallons is 8,000 milliliters? 8,000 milliliters is 2.113 liquid gallons. 
So two gallons, which will be about 10%. So even if this is like super high concentrated, it's only gonna be about 10% into here. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna, so that's risk number one. Risk number two is something I did when I reset it up like with the water sensor. So this little sensor here turns off the pump. If the water gets too high, it'll shut off the pump to avoid overflow. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we have one line coming, pulling water from the display tank and one line pulling, returning water from here back to display. Now if this thing somehow gets clogged and it can't return water to the display and we keep pulling water from the display in here, it'll flood the whole house. That would be very bad. So that's why we have this system here. Now, did I set it up correctly? Did I invert it? God no. But um, that's another reason why I'm gonna have to check it out again. All right, so now we're gonna turn on the pump and the risk here is that this pump is gonna stir stuff so much up, it's gonna turn into a dust cloud. And then when we exchange it with the display tank, we're gonna put make cloud, the display tank cloudy. All right, you wanna turn on now? Yeah. So I'm gonna plug in the pump. You definitely can have a rat's nest of wires. Okay. So watch here. I'm guessing there's going to be initially some increase in cloudiness, but hopefully after maybe uh, several hours it'll clear up. Here we go. You see it's blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So we don't have an instant explosion. So we're going to let that, and it's nice now that the water's circulating. It's passing through the chato, mm -hmm. and the chato can do its job, which is to absorb the bad boys. Yep. We should do a follow-up because people say that the Miracle Mud will enhance the color of the fish, and it will make your corals grow faster, be more beautiful. So it's not gonna happen overnight, but hopefully, like maybe we'll do an update on uh, the Miracle Mud impact, but now you can see what it looks like today. So when we look at it uh, in a little. Okay, this is the Miracle Mud about uh, six hours later. And you can tell it's really clear. So I think that mud has settled in even though the power head is a uh, return pump is kind of circulating the water inside. All right, that's it for today. See you in the next one. See you in the next one.